Okay, so we've looked at straight line depreciation and units of production depreciation. Now let's take a moment and let's look at double declining balance. So again, we're at the same point. We've got this piece of equipment that we paid a total of $12,000 for. Remember on January 1st, we debited equipment for $12,000. We credited cash for $12,000. In order to do double declining, we need the same information. We always need to know the cost, salvage value, and the use for life. The cost, again, was $12,000. We had that salvage value of $1,500. And for double declining, we need to know the useful life in years. So we've got the useful life sitting there at five years. Okay, so if you need to pause this at any time to, to actually write information down, please feel free to do so. All right, so now let's look at this. Year one, in order to calculate double declining balance, first we need to know the double declining balance formula. Double declining, you take two divided by useful life in years. Double means, you know, two times, so 200% uh, would be your value. So 100% would be one. Double declining means 200%, so two over useful life in years. And then we're going to multiply that by the cost minus the accumulated depreciation. Now another way to write that would be 2 over useful life in years times book value. Because remember, cost minus accumulated depreciation is your actual book value. So let's look at this. First thing we do is 2 divided by 5. Because useful life in years was 5 years. So 2 divided by 5. And we multiply that by cost minus accumulated depreciation. So that's going to be 12,000 minus zero. Remember, in the first year of an asset's life, there has been no depreciation. This is the first time we calculate it. So accumulated depreciation at this point in time is zero. So that gives you 0.4 or 40% times 12,000, which gives us 4,800 for the year. So our first year there, we get to recognize 4,800 in depreciation. Now, let's look at year two. Again, it's the same formula, 2 divided by useful life in years times cost minus accumulated depreciation. So we look at that 2 over 5, 2 divided by useful life in years, 2 over 5, which remember we said was 0.4. Then we'll multiply that by the cost, 12,000 minus accumulated depreciation. Now remember, accumulated depreciation is the sum of all years' depreciation. Last year, we, or the year before last, we had nothing. We depreciated 4,800 this year, so right now, we've got $4,800 in accumulated depreciation. So that's going to give us the 0 0.4 times 7,200, which will equal 2,880. So for year two, we've got 2,880 uh, in depreciation. So let's review. Year one, we depreciated 4,800. Year two, we did 2,880. So at this point, in accumulated depreciation, we have 7,680. Remember, accumulated depreciation is the sum of all year's expenses. Now, before we look at year three, how would we actually record the depreciation? Well, just like before, at the end of our year, or whenever we decide we need to record our depreciation, it has to at least be annual. We would go in and we debit depreciation expense, no matter what, whether it's straight line units of production or double declining balance, you would always debit depreciation expense. And in this case, our first year was 4800 Then we would credit the accumulated depreciation for the same amount. Now for year two, again, remember it would be depreciation expense and accumulated depreciation. Always. Every time you record depreciation, that's your entry. But remember for year two, we only calculated 2880 in actual expense for that year. Now that we've recorded those two years, let's just go and look at year three. Now in year three, we're going to take 2 over 5, again the 0.4. We're going to multiply it by cost minus accumulated depreciation. Remember, a few moments ago we looked and saw that accumulated depreciation is 7,680 at this point. So you're going to take 12,000 minus the 7,680. So that's going to give us 0 0.4 times 4,320, which gives us 1,728, or 1,728. So that would be our depreciation for the third full year. So year one, year two, and year three. Let's look at this again. Remember we had 4,800, 2,880, and 1,728. That brings us a total of 9,408. Now you may be wondering, why do you keep calculating accumulated depreciation? Well, remember we always need accumulated depreciation in order to calculate the next year's depreciation. But also, any time you're depreciating an asset, and it's especially true in double declining, we cannot over-depreciate. In other words, in this example, 10500 is the most we can have in accumulated depreciation. 
How do I know that? Well, the most or the highest balance you can have in accumulated depreciation is always going to equal your depreciable base or your depreciable cost. Depreciable cost is always the cost of the asset minus the salvage value. So if we were to take 12500 and subtract the 1500 that would give us 10500 That's the most we can depreciate. Once accumulated depreciation hits 10500 we have to stop depreciating the asset. That's the reason every single time I have calculated accumulated depreciation. I hope you have enjoyed and you found this video very helpful. If you have any questions, let me know.